talk about, excuse me, um, you, you talked about the other day, sort of about the, the different emotions uh, coaching Team USA. How do you feel like it's, I don't know if it's affected you or just things you've learned about yourself as a coach from this perspective, as opposed to all the years you've coached as a college coach, what, what do you think, how has it maybe changed you or affected you as a coach? Cause it is a different type of pressure, if you will. Um, I, I don't know if it, it's changed me. I think it's made me more aware of, um, you know, what, what's at stake. Mm -hmm. And usually, um, I mean, usually it's, it's a familiar feeling because you, you know, you go to Final Fours, you compete for national championships, and that that feeling is familiar. Um, here, it is you are representing an entire country, and you know they you know they they want you to do well, and they are very critical of how things were to how they look now, and I mean you always want to put your best foot forward. And if it, you know, if it isn't to our standard, um, and although we're winning, you know, it just keeps you busy. It just keeps you um, trying to figure out ways in which that make it feel a little different internally. You know, I, I, I move towards preparation. I move towards watching more and more and more and more film um, and getting less sleep. Um, versus um, there's so much you can do from a collegiate standpoint where you can watch a million films, you can, you know, but here you're just trying to create an edge, um, create some separation from your opponents. And it's, it's harder and harder because, you know, the margin of error is smaller and smaller. So you're trying to figure out what that is. And it, it's a moving target. It isn't something that, that, is the same every game because you, you're, you're playing against different styles um, and you yourself are trying to get your team to play um, to reach its full potential in a, in a short period of time. So it just, I mean, there, there are just feelings that I just aren't familiar to me. And it's, you know, it's, it's cool though, because I welcome, I welcome newness. Um, I, I've been coaching for, 21, 22 years, and um, in my 22nd year now, I got a deal, different feeling, and it's just different, and it, it's not frightening. I'm not, I'm not nervous. I'm not afraid. It's just you're anxious. You want to get out there, and you want to, you know, you don't want to wait around. You want to play. You want to play uh, a lot more games in the in the time that we've been here. We've been here for in almost two weeks now. And we've played three games. <laughs> so there's a lot of waiting around. So there's a lot of time that your, your mind is occupied with um, what you need to do to, to perform well. Don, I know you got used to this a long time ago, obviously, um, but the feeling of being a, a, an elite player versus an elite coach. Um, is it the same? I mean, do you have the same feelings going into a game that, that you would have, you know, when you were out on the court or, or how can you sort of characterize if it's different, what it's like? I mean, the difference is as a coach, um, you, you put the game plan in and then you just, you just watch them execute it. Um, and you know it's not to perfection, so there are things that you can do and say to them that will will help that. Uh, there there are things that you can lean over and and talk to a coach on my left or right or my far right, and and feel good about us covering what we need to cover. As a player, you're you're active. You actually are doing something physical. You are dribbling the basketball. You are making decisions you are communicating out there on the floor. So you're putting that energy into, into your play versus as a coach, you have to put that energy into co coaching someone else through, through your eyes. And it's a lot different because it's hands off. 
as a coach and as hands-on as a player. Thank you, appreciate it. And we'll go next to Mike Uba. How are you doing, Don? Uh, a little bit early here in Columbia. Um, Don, I, I got to ask you this, you know, obviously being able to see the growth of, of Asia from high school to college to the pros and now, you know, just last week you mentioned that the biggest thing that she needed to do was just to be Asia, even though she had an experience playing at the Olympic in the Olympics. What have you seen from her that has allowed her to be playing at such a high level for you guys three games in? I mean, she's young. <laughs> I mean, when you're when you're young and when you've played basketball at the highest level, as far as um, on a collegiate level, and then you know on the WNBA level, it, it builds confidence for uh, this stage, which is the biggest of her career. And I once she, I, I know she was a little nervous when we first started, but once she gets down to just being her and doing what she does. And that feeling of, I got my first shot to go down. Everything just clears up for her. I think she sees where she needs to be. And I, I just do think playing with other great players allow, it allows her to just be who she is because they're gonna make her look good. The only thing she has to do is catch the ball. And then everything else is, is practice. It's what she's always, has done and she's gotten to that feeling a lot sooner than most young people her age. And playing on a, you know, a season team, like, you know, or a season four players that she's starting um, the game with. Thank you. Next, uh, Doug Feinberg and then we'll roll it back to Michelle. Hey Dawn, good to see you. What's up Doug? I remember you telling us in Vegas that when you guys got to the quarterfinals, I guess when Sue and D were rookies, you had to say, Hey guys, now we get serious. Like these games count. Like if you don't win, like you go home. Is that something that you guys have to have that conversation, not with Sue and D, but with everyone, Hey, you know, this is it. This is when I go home now versus like the three other games where if you don't win, it's not the end of the world, but now it's like, okay, this is it. This is what we're here for. Like we got to turn up a notch, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mentioned it to our to our team before practice today because, you know, I know sometimes you, you know, you, you know, you, it's it is it goes without saying, and I just didn't want it to go. I didn't want to go without saying that, hey, it's do or die. This is what we came here for. This is the important part of it. You know, you you know, you can't get to what we came here to do unless you get by. Um, this opponent and and stay alive and stay in the in the medal hunt um, and it, it was quick it wasn't you know anything that you know that's going to you know conversation that's going to linger on you, these are pros you tell them um, exactly what you want and they they understand it it doesn't have to take a you know a dissertation to, for them to figure it out thanks Don and we'll close out today with Michelle Bobo. Michelle, go ahead. Yeah, Coach. Um, having you know the the Australia game so so recent in memory, um, how how does that help in some ways to 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 to, to face them again? Not that you guys aren't real familiar with them, but just that it's so it's so close in memory. And you, you were mentioned earlier, just um, waiting around a lot. Do you, would you rather have the old format of playing? You know, the five games preliminary, the way that that it always was. Um, rather than rather than three, yeah, I, I read to play more games because there 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 is a whole lot of sitting around. I mean, we did get some good practice time in, um, but I'm sure everybody else would, would much rather to play games um, to fill that time up, and then to play Australia. Um, I, I think I think it's great. I think it's great for us to have a familiar op opponent. Um, it, it it helps with scouting it helps with familiarity it helps with our, our players know you know what they're up against and and because we played them i think 17 18 days ago um so it, it's somewhat fresh on our mind and especially because we lost and we, we we like to just uh perform a lot better than we perform and finish the 40 minute play 
um, and allow our, you know, allow what we've done over the past couple of weeks um, to help us in situations in which if we build a big lead that we could hold on to it, or if we find ourselves down, we know that there are stretches in which we play great, that we have to string together to, you know, to, to play good basketball. So, but we know it's a formidable opponent and um, I'm sure we both are looking forward to playing each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Thanks, Carolyn.